do 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 so excited get to go play some hockey Woo! oh hi <laughs> i didn't see you there but i am so excited i'm gonna go get to play some hockey um and you know what because i know everyone secretly wants to be a goalie anyway but they're really the number one thing that holds people back from uh, expressing their inner goalie is that they're like i don't even I wouldn't even know where to start to put all that crap on. I didn't know how, how it all goes on. So I'm going to take you through step by step how to put on goalie gear. There will be different ways to put on goalie gear. Some of you goalies out there watching are like, that's not what I do. That's okay. This is just one of the many ways that you can put on goalie gear. I'm going to say it's the best way, but it's not. Let's get geared up. because we're not allowed to go in the rinks at the time that I'm shooting this video because of COVID. But uh, what I do is spread myself, my stuff out all over the place. I actually love the social distancing because then people can't be like, why is the goal? It's hogging all the space. It's like, it's just making a little social barrier for himself to keep, uh, keep himself and you safe. But uh, so I, <laughs> and then <laughs> maybe I am a bit of a goalie because I have like an order. So I put my gloves and my blocker on this side and I put my mask on this side as well so that's sort of the later stage of you don't have to do this part this is just sort of the wacky goalie part uh, my chest protector I'll hang up behind me but I don't have a hanger upper behind me so I'll just set it there behind me my pants I'll also hang up behind me but we'll just make believe that that's a hanger upper uh, and then my knee pads and my knee guard. So if you, okay, I haven't even introduced myself. <laughs> Very rude. My name is Maria. I am an exercise physiologist and I specialize in off ice training for hockey goalies, but I'm also uh, like a beginner intermediate goalie myself. So some of these videos I'll make that are for people like me who, who never had the chance to play goalie as a kid and they want to start playing, but it's a little, it can be a little intimidating. So that's what this is all about. Um, you're watching me on my YouTube channel, Goalie Training Pro TV. The website is goalietrainingpro.com. If you want to see what all my gear is, if you're like, well, what glove was that? What pads are those? What's, whose pants is she wearing? Uh, <laughs> you can check out this video where I go through what's in my goalie bag. So that's where you can check that out. Then, I'll get my skates out. I wear a neck guard and a pelvic protector as well. Those also go on this side. So this side is the things I put on towards the start. This side is the things I put on towards the end because sometimes I get all dressed and I realize I forgot to put something vital on like my pelvic protector. So that's usually one of the first things to go on. Because you know what happens if you don't put on your, for a girl it's called a pelvic protector, for a guy it's called a jock or a goalie jock or I don't know what you call it. But uh, if you don't put it on, you know you're going to get hit with a clapper right off the dinger. So put that on first. All set. Half the time I'll get my, not half the time, but sometimes I'll get my chest protector on and I will realize that I forgot to put my neck guard on. So I wear this one. Um, I like it because it's got neck protector, like so the cut proof material up here on my neck, but then it also has really nice like clavicle protectors and a little extra protection uh, here. I do wear a dangler, but a little extra protection here and extra protection here. And it feels really, really comfortable when I wear it. Sometimes when I wear the standalone ones, it feels like they want to spin around on my neck, but this one with the little chemise doesn't do that. Then if you wear these, and again, if you want to see what all the gear is and why I wear it and how I like it, check out that what's in my bag video. Oops. <laughs> Wrong foot. Wrong leg. Wrong knee. So these are just little knee pads that I wear, G-form knee pads, because I'm a delicate flower and I don't like my knees to feel sore in any way. So I fire those on 
Then I put on my regular knee pads. If you're a goalie that doesn't wear knee pads under your leg pads, I don't understand you at all. I'm not saying I don't love you. I'm not saying we can't be friends. Just saying you're one of those friends I love that I don't understand. And that's okay. If you're wondering, what do the knee pads? Why do you wear knee pads? You already have leg pads. A um, couple things. They actually add a little bit of height, so it takes some load. There's less torque on your hip and your knee, so that's a win. But also, sometimes the there's little gaps. So if you're down in your butterfly, and maybe too, it just happens your pad doesn't rotate the way it should. It could leave the top of your knee or the sides of your knee really, really exposed. It also, just feels better. And I wear on my pants. Boom. These pants have an inside belt. So you gotta get that in the right spot. Next thing, my skate's gone. I don't have a specific order. They seem to work either way. I did get some new laces. I like to say new new year new laces. And I use wax laces. Do you guys use wax laces? or no wax laces, or unwaxed laces, I guess they'd be called. Let me know, drop a comment below and let me know, and let me know why, and let me know what you like about them. I like wax laces because I feel they hold their position better. Like when I pull it like that, I feel like it's not gonna creep as much. They're a little harder to get untied sometimes, I think, I, like they feel a little stiffer, but I'd rather have that than have them creeping the creepers. Then comes the fun part. Get to put the pads on. It depends a little bit what kind of a toe tie that you have, how exactly it will work. It's going to be a similar type of thing whether you have a skate lace or a bungee. It's going to for the most part be the same. Uh, the Warriors come with just sort of a single strap that, that kind of goes underneath your skate, but I have, I've got the Pro Laces, uh, the hybrid armor. So, but basically, you're gonna snug that up so that your, the toe of your blade is right up at, at sort of the end of the lace. And if you use a skate lace, tie a few knots in it so that there's a little bit of slack there so it can move. Because if you snug your toe bridge right up to the pad, your pad is probably gonna wanna over, over rotate. Like you're gonna land on the face of your pad if it's a skate lace, cause it's gonna pull it around. If it's a bungee, it'll, it'll get, there's some give in it so it'll be good. Or you can you know, tie some knots in it so that you have about that much, you know, an inch or so of, of slack in there. But then you'll bring the lace or the or the bungee or whatever underneath your blades and like right through like a hole in your blade holder and then you'll come up onto the top of your skates like that. So if you have a lace you would pull it up, you might wrap it around a couple times, you know, before you tie a knot in it like that. And then you're going to bring your pads up. So again, it depends a little bit on the uh, brand that you have. These, my, I use Warriors, and um, so these have a little strap that goes through the Lundy loop. So I'll show you what that is when I when I do it on the other side. I'll give you a close up, close up view. So this loop here on the back of my skate, that's called the Lundy loop, and it's named after Henrik Lundqvist. And so some manufacturers give you a strap that's made to go with that. And it's just meant to sort of hold the pad on your leg a little bit better, have the pad move with you. So as I bring my pad up, I take that through that loop, and then there's a little eyelet up here. I just snap it on. And then here, I don't go too tight. If you make your pad super tight, which is, you know, Intuitively, you might think so. I don't want them, you know, feeling sloppy. But if they're too tight, they're they're gonna move too much with your legs, and you are gonna end up landing on the face of the pads a lot. Because when we go into our butterfly, our, our legs sort of do rotate down 
to face towards the ice a bit and our pads then stay facing the way they should so our our lower leg kind of rotates within the pad so we need to give it some freedom to do that and then you'll often have a couple different um, options with your strap whether you want this strap to come straight across so sometimes there's a pad um, that like I took mine off but there would be a little pad here and you'd come straight across and strap that in there so that pad's going to go straight behind your knee. I don't love the way that feels so Warrior gives me the option and other brands do as well gives me the option to come down here onto my calf and snap it in like that and to me that just feels a lot better and then I do a little wiggle test <laughs> which I just kind of go like this and see yeah if my pads are kind of like there's room for them to wiggle around a little bit I'm like yeah that's good so if they feel good after the wiggle test then I know that I'm good to go GTG as we say gonna give you a little behind the scenes <laughs> look at the day in the life of a goalie strength coach uh, so I the lab is in the basement, obviously. My office is up on the second floor. And the battery to this light decided to kick off. And that one probably will too, knowing my luck. And <laughs> but I'm in my skate, so I cannot go traipsing through the house in my skate. So uh, I've had to do a little rejig. If you've, if you've noticed, the lighting seems a little off. That's it. I apologize. Apologize. It's like amateur hour around here. What is this, amateur hour? Okay, what goes on next? So. Got my pads, got my pants, knee guards, uh, we're all set there. The next thing that goes on is the old chest protector. So before you put on your chest protector, always ask yourself, hey, have I got my neck guard on? Yeah, I do. Because once you get your chest protector on, it's going to be very hard to get your neck guard on. So I never undo the straps on mine. I always just pull it on right over my head. Now. You can, you can tuck your chest protector into your pants or you can wear it on the outside over top of your pants. It is part personal preference. It is part equipment and how the equipment is made to work together. So, you know, and by buying a warrior chest protector and different kind of acts like CCM access pants, you know, it's like, okay. And I don't think it like it. It's not to say that if you buy a warrior chest protector and a warrior pants, it's going to be perfect. But so you just have to look at the attributes of the equipment to see what if it has what you like. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, I like my chest protector to be a little bit longer. So I prefer to tuck it in and so that it's all sealed and held down. I hate it when I feel like my chest protector is riding up. It drives me crazy. It feels like it's pushing my mask up. So I like to tuck mine in and tie it down. So when I looked at these CCM pants, I really liked how they had a fairly like deep, um, deep barrel, like uh, like it, it didn't sit low on my waist. My other pants felt like they were sat lower on my waist. So I just do up the internal belt a little bit, but I let my pants sit pretty low. Then I tuck in all the other parts and I really try to cram it down in there. Then I take my skate lace and I bring it up underneath. Now there is also, I think there's a little loop somewhere on here that I can tie it to, but to me it's easiest just to pull it through here. I got this tip actually from my friend Michael Luzis, who's a goalie and now realtor extraordinaire. So I just tie it, so then it it keeps my chest protector from riding up. But wait, there's more. Uh, I hate having it ride up so much that I also wear suspenders, which I also forget to pull up a lot of the time. And then I go skating out on the ice and the people I play with are like, hey Maria, you got something hanging out under your jersey? And it's like, son of a gun. I forgot those suspenders again. But I put them on and I, so I put them on over my chest protector with the idea that I want to help keep my chest protector down. If it's just to keep your pants from falling down, you can put it on underneath your chest protector. That's totally cool. And then I bring them inside uh, the uh, floaters and so that then they're not sliding off. Some chest protectors have a little loop. Even these uh, suspenders that I got from uh, Pro Laces, they came with a little strap that I could have put on these floaters 
to then hold the suspenders in place. To me, it's a little fussy. It's easier for me just to pull them in here. They don't dig on my neck or anything, so I'm pretty happy with that. Then I put on, put my arms in. So make sure you put your suspenders on before you get your arms in there. And then it's the hardest part of being a goalie in the world, and that is putting on your jersey. There are a lot of different techniques for putting on your jersey, so find what works best for you. Some people like to put their head through first and then try to weave their arms through. To me, I always end up getting it hung up on the very back and it, it won't work, and then I have to ask for help. So, not there's anything wrong with asking for help, but what I do and what I have the most success with is I get one arm like way in there first. Then I bring my head over and then I get my other arm. Now I'm getting nervous because I'm kind of getting stuck. Whew. Thought I was going to get stuck. Then I just swish it around to get my arms feeling right. It's up to you whether you're going to do the tuck or not. If it's good enough for 99, it's probably good enough for us. Just saying. Then, you have to put on your mask. You can just put it on like that if you want to look super cool. Glove. Blaka. And you, my friend, are ready to go out and stop all them pucks. So that's how you get dressed as a goalie. Get there a little bit early. It takes a while. I think it, as much as I joke about it, for me laying my gear out sort of in a certain order or in certain areas really helps because then I know, okay, I've got to put on all this stuff first, you know, and, and it does help lead me through it. But uh, if you're brand new to goaltending, try it on at home you know, a couple times before you get out there um, so that you sort of are familiar with how it feels and, and how to make it feel right on you and play around with it a little bit. But uh, that's it. That's all. Happy puck stopping. I'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Hey, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this video. If you haven't, if you've already subscribed, make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications whenever I post a new video. You should know this already, but let's just do it this time. And if you have any questions, any, any ideas for topics or videos you want me to make, uh, pop them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys and answer all your comments. I will catch you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye.